assignment questions so first question is what are the stepper motors list the types of stepper motors various stepper motors and its characteristics and any one type of the stepper motor you have to explain or write short note on the stepper motors or uh, another there are three types of uh, stepper motors one is variable reluctance motor another is permanent magnet motor and third one is the hybrid stepper motors so we'll see all these types also so question may be asked as explain variable reluctance stepper motor in detail so you have to explain in the operation construction in detail then explain permanent magnet stepper motor in detail then uh, um, uh, hybrid stepper motor also question may be asked but the, Uh, diagram of uh, hybrid stepper motor it is a bit difficult to draw so it may or may not be asked in the examination but you should know how uh, its construction is and how it operates so basically are uh, usually these two types of motors variable reluctance and permanent magnet stepper motors they are usually asked in the examination then next probable question may be compare variable reluctance motor with permanent magnet stepper motor and explain the control or driver circuits used for stepper motors and state and explain various applications of stepper motor so we'll see uh, answers of uh, all these questions uh, one by one so let us uh, begin our uh, uh, discussion with uh, general uh, what are the stepper motors so i'll first uh, uh, turn off this uh, video i'll stop this video as it is uh, taking uh, consuming much uh, more bandwidth uh, thank you now uh, what are the stepper motors so stepper motor it is uh, known by its important property to convert a train of input pulses that is a square wave pulses into precisely defined increment in the shaft position each pulse moves the shaft through a fixed angle so the stepper motor is an electromechanical device which actuates a train of step movements of shaft in response to train of the input pulses the step movement may be angular or linear now there is one to one relationship between an input pulse and the step movement of the shaft each pulse input actuates one step movement of the shaft when a given number of uh, pulses are supplied to the motor the shaft gets turned into or rotated through a known angle the angle through which the motor turns or shaft rotates or shaft moves for each pulse is known as the step angle expressed in degrees now as such angle is dependent on the number of input pulses the motor is suitable for controlling position by controlling the number of input pulses such system is used to control the position which is called as the position control system the average motor speed is proportional to the rate at which the input pulse command is delivered when the rate is low the motor rotates in steps which is observable but for high rate of pulses due to the inertia it rotates smoothly like dc motors due to this property it is also used in speed control systems these motors are available in sub fractional horsepower ratings as the input command is in pulses the stepper motor is compatible with modern digital equipments and due to its compatibility with digital equipments 
its market is greatly increased in recent times in real time applications like xy plotters floppy disk drives machine tools process control systems robotics printers tape drives and variety of other industrial applications now let us see uh, what are the different types of uh, stepper motors so now stepper motors are divided into three different categories variable reluctance stepper motor permanent magnet stepper motor and hybrid stepper motor okay so we'll see uh, construction and operation of uh, one by one in detail so this is the variable reluctance stepper motor this is the construction of uh, variable uh, reluctance motor schematic diagram this is the stator and uh, it has got salient poles salient poles means poles which have come out came up so these are the salient poles so these are the salient poles so these are the salient poles for stator and this is the rotor so rotor is the rotating part of this motor so this rotor is having four poles this pole 1 pole 2 pole 3 and pole 4 so there are four poles in this rotor and this is the shaft to which this rotor is connected and this stator it is a stationary winding or stationary part and this rotor is the rotating part okay so it is the most basic type of stepper motor the stepper motor has a stator which is usually wound for three phase now this stator has six salient poles 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 now these six salient poles they are connected for three phase winding now this three phase winding how it is carried so three phase winding winding is done for the opposite poles so one winding for opposite poles so diagonally opposite poles so this a and a dash this is having a pole pair then b b dash this is another pole pair and this c c dash it is another pole pair so there are six poles but having three pole pairs and now the winding is wound on these poles in such a way that one winding will be for this opposite diagonally opposite pole pair so a a dash will have one phase winding b b dash will have another phase winding whereas c c dash will have the third phase winding so in this way this stator has six salient poles and um three phase winding on that okay now the construction of this stator uh, is a laminated one so as uh, as that of other uh, motors dc motor or uh, three phase induction motor so we have seen that the stator winding it is uh, stator construction is usually of uh laminated uh, type of construction okay and it is assembled in a single stack so this is only one stack and in this single stack all these stator windings are placed the number of poles of the stator and rotor number of poles on the rotor they are different so here in stator there are six poles whereas on rate rotor there are four poles so now why there is a difference between these poles the reason is that these gives this difference in the number of poles it gives the ability to the motor uh, it gives two different abilities to the motor one is it um, allows the motor for bidirectional rotation and second it is it becomes self starting or the motor is self starting uh, capability uh, so these are the two um, reasons why these uh, stator and rotor poles are different so they are giving the uh, motor 
the ability of bidirectional rotation and self starting capability okay now the rotor is made up of slotted steel laminations so these are the uh, slotted steel laminations uh, rotor slotted steel laminations if the number of stator poles are ns so if this number of poles are n suffix s so this is n suffix s is the number of poles on the stator and n suffix r is the number of poles on the rotor then for a three phase motor that is phase is number of phase is q let us say so for a three phase motor the rotor poles uh, in ns in terms of ns and q they can be written as uh, or they are given as nr is equal to ns plus or minus ns by q that means number of rotor poles is equal to number of stator poles plus or minus number of stator poles divided by number of phases for which you have wound the stator winding so in our case in this example we are having six uh, stator poles and wound for three phase windings so ns value is 6 and q value is 3 so what will be value of nr so if ns is equal to 6 it is 6 plus or minus 6 upon three phases so divided by 3 so 6 by 3 it comes out to be 2 so and this is 6 so 6 plus or minus 2 that means nr will be either 8 or 4 6 plus 2 it will become 8 Six minus two, it will become four. So number of rotor teeth or number of rotor poles will be either eight or four. So for in uh, this example, I have shown here four number of uh, poles for a rotor. This is pole one, pole two, pole three, and pole four. So these are the four poles for rotor and for uh, stator. There are this pole one. Two, three, four, five, and six pole. Whereas this is a pole pair: north, south, north, south, north, south, or south, north. So these will form a pole pair. Okay, and uh, this will be again pole pair. One will be north, one will be south. Okay, so like this. So it may be uh, poles. So I hope you have understood the construction of this. now the coils are wound around diamond uh, dimensionally or diagonally opposite coils so this say a a dash so this winding is made for this coil a a dash so these coils are in series so um, these coils wound uh, diagonally opposite poles for diagonally opposite poles connected in series and three phases are energized from the dc source with the help of this switches so this um, pole pair a a dash they are having this winding in series so these these are the windings this is the winding for a a dash connected in series and it is connected to this dc supply positive of the, this battery is connected to this a through this then a dash and through this switch sw1 it is connected back to negative of battery so similarly for bb dash so this is the winding for b this is winding for b dash both connected in series and then through sw2 it is connected back to negative of battery then similar connection is for the third phase whereas this pole c and c dash winding they are connected in series then this connected through this switch sw3 back to negative of this supply so this is the constructional diagram of this this sw1 sw2 and sw3 these are the switches now whenever we want to energize a particular pole pair then we'll turn on this switch particular switch 
so that the magnetic axis will be developed on along that particular uh, pole pair okay if let us say sw1 is on so if sw1 is on then current will flow from this positive of battery through this a then a dash switch 1 back to negative of battery so as current is flowing through this magnetic field will be developed across this a a dash and the axis of magnetic uh, magnetic field will be now vertically upward now in this a a dash the axis will be vertically vertical axis uh, as shown in this diagram uh, dotted line so this is the vertical axis whenever we are magnetizing or uh, whenever we are switching on this switch 1 and we are magnetizing this uh, pole pair a a dash so current is flowing through a a dash so magnetic field will be developed across this amongst this and the uh, uh, stator magnetic axis will be like this shown in dotted line so this is theta equal to 0 degree okay now uh, if this instead of sw1 if your sw2 is on then current will flow from the positive of uh, battery through this uh, coil series coil from b b dash through this switch sw2 and back to this battery so magnetic field will be established along this bb dash pole pair and the um, axis of uh, magnetic uh, stator magnetic axis will be along this bb dash okay so it is this dotted line shown in this figure okay so this is the magnetic axis of this stator when sw2 is uh, switched on right now instead of sw2 and sw1 if let us say sw3 is switched on then current will flow from this positive end of battery through this c winding in series in c dash winding and through this sw3 back to negative of battery so now as the current is flowing through this c and c dash windings this magnetic field will be developed across this particular c c dash pole pair and the magnetic axis will be having this dotted direction right this is the c c dash so this is the magnetic axis right so stator magnetic axis so now as you are changing the switches sw1 2 and 3 your magnetic axis will change from this vertical position or to this position or to this position right so this is the magnetic axis now there is one another axis which is uh, referred as the um, axis which is connecting to any pole pair of the rotor so now here this rotor is this is having a rotor pole pair so this is one axis which is one horizontal uh, vertical one and this is another axis of rotor which is horizontal one so one axis is vertical another axis is horizontal for this rotor pole pair now as its name indicates it is the variable reluctance stepper motor so it operates on the principle of minimum reluctance position so minimum reluctance position what do you mean by that minimum reluctance position is that position where this stator magnetic axis will align with the one of the uh, axis of this rotor magnetic axis right so the whenever the positions of the stator magnetic axis and the rotor magnetic axis whenever they align to each other that is the minimum reluctance position okay so here you can see this rotor pole 
pair is connected so this is the rotor uh, axis and it is aligned with this stator uh, magnetic axis so this is the minimum reluctance position now see in this figure also this is the axis of one axis of this uh, rotor pair and this dotted line is the axis of the magnetic axis of stator so stator magnetic axis and this rotor magnetic axis uh, rotor pole magnetic axis they are aligned so this is also the minimum reluctance position see here also a stator um, magnetic axis and rotor pole pair axis they are aligned to each other so it is a minimum reluctance position so you have to keep in mind that this variable reluctance stepper motor it runs or it operates on the variable reluctance position of the rotor with respect to the stator so when any one phase of the stator is excited it produces its own magnetic field whose axis lies along the poles the phase around which it is excited okay then the rotor moves in such a direction so as to achieve minimum reluctance position such a position means a position where axis of magnetic field of stator matches with the axis passing through any two poles of the rotor so let us see the operation when the phases a b and c are energized in sequence one after another with the help of switches sw1 sw2 and sw3 so let us consider this figure so this is the rotor tip and this is another rotor tip so this rotor tip pair a a dash now this a a dash these windings so this is the winding current is flowing through this series it will flow through this and uh, this pole pair a a dash will be energized when this pole pair will be energized then stator magnetic field will be developed and the stator magnetic field axis will be this dotted one so this we have already seen so when the phase a a dash is excited with the switch sw1 closed then the stator magnetic axis exist along the poles formed due to a a dash that is vertical now the rotor adjust itself to a minimum reluctance position that is matching its own axis to the two poles own axis passing through the two poles so this axis it is passing through this two poles exactly with the stator magnetic axis so this position it is shown in this figure okay now when the phase bb dash is excited with the switch sw2 closed and phase aa dash is deenergized by opening the switch sw1 then the stator magnetic axis it shifts along the poles formed due to bb dash as shown in this figure now okay then the rotor tries to align in the minimum reluctance position and turns through 30 degree anti clockwise direction so here this was the initial position p position now as the axis is here this pole which is very near this pole axis which is very near to this 30 degree to this which will align this particular point here and 30 degrees on this side so this is the 30 degree which is the this axis will have the minimum position very near whereas this point is having 60 degree difference 
to this axis where this is having 30 degree so this point will come and this line of uh, rotor pair will be aligned with this stator uh, magnetic axis so that this p point will be shifted in anti clockwise direction by 30 degree so that means the motor uh, rotor of this motor has rotated in anti clockwise direction through 30 degree okay so axis passing through these two diagonally opposite poles of rotor matches with the stator axis okay this is the new minimum reluctance position the point p shown on the rotor has rotated through 30 degree in anti clockwise direction as shown in this particular figure now let us see if instead of sw1 sw2 and um, uh, we are turning on sw3 so as sw3 is energized instead of sw2 by making sw2 open and closing sw3 so as soon as sw3 is closed phase windings cc dash it is excited right and the phases aa dash and bb dash are now deenergized because this sw1 and sw2 they are turned off right so the stator magnetic axis shifts along the poles formed due to this cc dash and the pole axis uh, stator magnetic axis will be shown as in this dotted line okay now the uh, in order to achieve the minimum reluctance position again this particular pole um, uh, rotor um, axis rotor magnetic axis which is having this p position here so it will rotate further 30 degree in anti clockwise direction and it will get the minimum reluctance position at this particular point so that this now this uh, rotor has shifted from its original position by 60 degree in counter clockwise direction and 30 degree from this previous position so rotor is rotating by 30 degree in anti clockwise direction every time whenever you are changing the sequence from sw1 to sw2 to sw3 again sw1 again sw2 again sw3 okay so i hope uh, you have understood uh, the operation of uh, this uh, particular motor uh, stepper motor variable reluctance stepper motor so as you are exciting this phase windings a b and c in the sequence by applying operating this switches sw1 sw2 and sw3 the rotor is rotating for every pulse which you are applying one pulse you are applying for switch 1 so it will rotate by 30 degree step in anti clockwise direction when you are applying second step uh, second pulse to this second switch then further it will move in anti clockwise direction by 30 degree if third pulse you are applying to switch sw3 to turn it on further it will rotate by 30 degree so this uh, rotor is rotating by every uh, on every pulse received by 30 degree in anti clockwise direction because the switching sequence is sw1 sw2 and sw3 now instead of this sequence if you are reversing the sequence instead of uh, after first instead of second switch if you are pressing this third switch then instead of this magnetic axis of stator it will be this magnetic axis of stator and to align the rotor poles to this stator magnetic axis this rotor has to rotate in clockwise direction by 30 degrees so 
if you want to reverse the direction of this motor you have to reverse the phase sequence of this switches so if your phase sequence of switches is 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 then motor will rotate in anti clockwise direction for every pulse for uh, 30 degree step side if you are applying frequency is very high then it will rotate smoothly in anti clockwise direction if your phase sequence is 1 3 2 1 3 then motor will rotate in clockwise direction by 30 degree each step okay so depending on the frequency again your uh, speed will be more or less that means you can operate this motor in steps or in a smooth uh, operation like a dc motor okay so i hope uh, you have understood uh, this uh, operation so now for successful uh, one cycle how many steps will be required uh, to complete one revolution it is 360 divided by 30 so it will be 12 so 12 steps will be needed to complete one revolution of this particular rotor okay now if the current i is flowing in the passing through these phases in this phases if current i is passing all the time and um then the torque developed by the motor that tm torque developed by the motor it is equal to 1 by 2 i square dl by d theta where l is the inductance of the relevant phase at an angle theta right so that means this torque is directly proportional to square of the current so as torque is directly proportional to square of the current it is it is independent of the direction of current that means even if you will change the direction of current the direction of rotation will not be changed that means the direction of rotation is totally independent of the phase current which is flowing through the windings and the direction of rotation is totally decided by the phase sequence in which your phases are excited for example i have told you 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 will give you counter clockwise direction of the rotation whereas 1 3 2 1 3 2 1 3 2 will give you clockwise direction of the rotation so i hope you have understood uh, the entire uh, operation of this uh, variable reluctance stepper motor so now uh, let us uh, see the next uh, sorry uh, next uh, operation or before that we'll see what are the advantages and disadvantages of this uh, variable reluctance motor and we'll try to finish it off so the major advantages of this uh, variable uh, reluctance motor they are it is having a high torque to inertia ratio high rates of acceleration then fast dynamic response simple and low cost machine it is then efficient cooling arrangement as all the windings are on stator and there is no winding on the rotor and rotor construction is robust due to absence of brushes as they are present in the uh, in case of um, dc motors okay so i hope you have understood uh, this uh, variable reluctance motor so um,